वॉट इज़ अप गाइज कैसे हो आप लोग वेलकम टू द ट्वेंटी थ्री राइड्स चैनल टुडे वी आर राइडिंग द बी एस ए गोल्ड स्टार सिक्स फिफ्टी आई हैव बीन राइडिंग दिस मोटरसाइकिल फॉर द पास्ट कपल ऑफ डेज एंड टुडे ऑन अ संडे वी थाट वील राइड दिस मोटरसाइकिल इन एंड अराउंड नोएडा सो वी वेंट ऑन अ संडे राइड टू जेवर आई इन फैक्ट हैव युद्धवीर एंड विश्वास विद मी विश्वास राइड्स द सुपर मीटी ऑफ सिक्स फिफ्टी एंड युद्धवीर इज बाय द वे राइडिंग अ बी एम डब्ल्यू ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड जी एस टूडे so we thought all of us will take turns ride this machine and share some feedback about this motorcycle with you guys so without further ado let's get started with what we feel about the motorcycle there is vishwas that is his super meteor 650 and that is yudhveer hello yudhveer hi hi so let's start with the basics first what did you feel while riding the motorcycle it is uh positioned as the largest single cylinder motorcycle that is available in india 650 cc single cylinder motorcycle uh we have heard all about the specs 43 44 bhp and the loads of torque it offers what does it feel to ride it so if i have to give my first impressions um uh, this is uh, the first experience to ride uh, something which is a big cylinder more bike like a 650 cc so of course you imagine uh, with a single cylinder you would have a noise of a thumper i personally do not like too much of a thumper sound as such and then of course you would always uh, wonder there will be a lot of vibrations but uh, the bike catches you with a surprise element that uh, the sound of the motorcycle is still musical and it's not intimidating you know when you look at a motorcycle you think it's a 650 cc it's an easy motorcycle low to the ground probably because the character of the motorcycle is like that it's kind of a very easy handler as soon as you let out the clutch because the motorcycle takes off uh with an ease and then you get this shit loads of torque coming over from the engine and it becomes a fun motorcycle so my first impression was if you were to ride this motorcycle within the city going from one place to the other it's such an easy motorcycle it still has lots of loads of power and torque turns well handles the ground uh, easily tires are phenomenal so the first impression about the ride and handling is very very positive over to vishwas vishwas will come from a background of riding a royal enfield twin right 650 cc super meteor Right, so I've been riding a Super Meteor for the last one and a half years now, some twelve, thirteen thousand kilometers. So I'm used to the twin smoothness of that. So the first impression when I sat on this was the amazing springy. I would use the word, uh, you know, use the word springy torque which it has. It's amazing when you sit on it. The overall ride posture is good. You feel confident when you sit on the bike, and when you just, uh, you know, throttle it, it just takes off. that's the best thing about this and that's the difference between a twin and this one uh overall in terms of uh, you know the first i would say 5 7 kilometers and i was used to, i was getting used to this and i had just come off from my uh, twin super meteor uh, 650 i think i could feel a uh, little bit more vibration on the seat and not just on the pegs so that's one thing maybe that's the difference it has to be between a large single and a twin which i've been riding but uh, again the torque and the overall feel of power was there in this uh, and uh, you know it's something which gives you that feedback when you throttle it out so you get to know that you're putting in some effort to ride a machine and it's responding to your need of power or throttle so overall the first impression it's a very torquey machine and interesting to ride and i would definitely go by the word that uh, it's a very good city motorcycle for sure that's my first impression about it so for me also uh, when i got onto the motorcycle it is a very peppy engine like all of you said but when we are talking about the ride quality did you did you feel anything about the suspension because i've heard from a lot of people that the suspension specifically the rear suspension is very stiff so any thoughts on that i felt that it was a little stiff and even the minor patchwork on the expressway was being felt on the back and it was kind of throwing you off Do you feel anything like that? So what you're saying is uh, true to an extent uh, because the motorcycle is so close to the ground. Maybe the suspension travel is also limited. Of course, it is 
hard uh, on these settings because as such you do not have a lot of uh, ground clearance so you would not keep it plumy because it would start uh, bottoming down as such. So that way the tuning is good but uh, the negative impact it has is when there is a patchy road you kind of get a little conscious about it because uh, it surely is a hard suspension so you can feel it uh, through the motorcycle coming over to you. So you have to tune yourself to accommodate the road because you cannot be like on a regular usual high ground clearance motorcycle but it's more of a roadster or a scrambler kind of a motorcycling so you got to do that but uh, I would like to still point out that we were doing uh, or I did couple of times 140 more than 140 also and uh, still ch uh, was challenged by some of the patchy uh, pieces of the road uh, it, it's all about getting used to it. It's uh, it's not something which uh, should bother hugely. Yes, it can be a concern for some when you're not uh, accustomed to it and accustomed to some other sort of riding because the character of the motorcycle is that way. But it should not be a huge negative, I would say. I think we were uh, at one point in time when uh, Vishwas and me were on the expressway while coming back from Jaivar. We somehow decided to ride our motorcycles fast because both of them on paper are 650cc machines and we thought let's test what's the top speed of the BSA Gold Star. Uh, and for, for me I thought that I was able to take it to about 160 kmph. I was not able to overtake him because he was obviously riding a twin which was, which was having much more power than that, uh, than this machine. But 160 is what I managed to hit. Uh, I think you also touched around 160. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Just so, above 160, so yeah. I don't think that this motorcycle is slow by any standard, right? So, okay. it can maintain 120 very easily, and 160, anyways, no one is going to ride. It was just an experiment that we were trying out. Let's shoot and see how fast these motorcycles can go. Oh, he is pulling on the gas, riding at about 145. I am at 140. We normally don't do this sort of stuff. But let's see. The punch on offer with the BSA Gold Star. Let's go all out, man. I hope this is not a pothole. Yeah. overtook the Super Meteor at 160 kmph and I didn't feel very confident because of the immense wind blast. But quite surprising right. the wind blast yeah. is still manageable you know yeah. even though it's a naked motorcycle and I was wondering that mm. on a motorcycle like this what would happen if you are on a 140, 150 mm. you kind of would be thrown off by the air but it comes easy I, I don't know how it is being managed because there is no visor yeah. and the bike is completely naked but uh, Somehow it was very comfortable. I mean, I don't know what would happen when the wind blast is hot during June. Yeah. How would it hit you? Yeah. But uh, the weather today was fine and so it was absolutely okay. What did you feel about the wind blast? Because you are riding a motorcycle with a windshield. So I have uh, a windshield on my motorcycle. So for me, it was a little different. For my height, that windshield which I have on my bike is perfect. It doesn't let any wind blast, you know, hit me. But on this, I could feel that there are jerks on my neck and the helmet and everything. I mm. could feel the blast. Mm. Maybe because I'm used to that windshield, that could be a reason and you're not. So maybe that could be one reason. Mm. And in terms of, uh, you know, the suspension when we were just talking about. So people say that the Super Meteor has a stiff rear suspension. So I've been used to riding that now. So with that, I'd expected this to be a little more softer in terms of the ride. But I did not find it that soft. Mm. So, uh, you know, people say that is stiff. I would say this is equally stiff. So, I'm used to that. It didn't bother me much. But yes, I could feel those jerks even with the slightest of the, I would say, adulations mm. on the road. That was there. But then again, at that 160, which so while it's not advised that, mm. you know, that speed is touched. But when we were just testing the bikes, this bike could match up with the, you know, yeah. the twins speed. You that. be left behind. Yes, That's you the won't point, be right, when you are touring. Behind. Yes. Talking yes, about yes. touring, can we tour on this motorcycle, do you think? It can be a tourer. Depends on what touring means to you, right? If it includes off-roading, I don't think so. This is a motorcycle on which you can do any sort of, uh, 
you know travel on those bad surfaces or rough surfaces so uh, just mean uh, every time when people talk about touring na uh-huh. the first thing they say is we'll take the bike to ladakh uh-huh. you know that is one what people generally are talking about these days but you know most of the time 90% of the times you are actually on the road uh-huh. and on a road you need a road star i think uh, a motorcycle like this which has shit loads of uh, talk uh, doesn't uh, you know uh, bog you down over a period of time doesn't make you lethargic uh, because you don't have to rework so much on the motorcycle so it's a pr- practical motorcycle uh, uh, to tour around but when you say that you can obviously not race around on this motorcycle because it's a naked motorcycle it's an open one it would not have so much of space to carry your luggage etc but i mean e- eventually if you want to travel on this motorcycle with a 650 cc kind of an engine still okay i would still wonder the range of the motorcycle because the tank capacity being low because that remains a concern when you are traveling you don't want to you know stop uh, again and again for refueling etc that can be a concern because the fuel tank is uh, around 11 liters or so yeah. something like that yeah. okay maybe you'll start feeling jittery after 200 kilometers and you would hit a fuel station so that's the only concern which okay. i guess otherwise it's fine i mean what about the heating did you guys experience any heat coming from the engine it will be interesting to hear your point of view since you guys are wearing riding jeans so my impression today because we were not um, we were not into very heavily trafficked areas we were still out there in the open the bike was running on its sixth gear and things like that we couldn't feel anything at all okay. i mean it would make a difference when you're going to do it in a busy street inside uh, the town with office hours etc so i actually tried that when i was getting the bike from the saket showroom i think on friday and i started from there around 3:30 pm kind of the rush hour time uh, in bumper to bumper traffic i was able to feel a little bit of heat on my right thigh uh, just around the knee area as well and what i want to mention is i was feeling that heat even when i was wearing my full riding gear riding boots riding pant which has some insulation as well so i am assuming if you ride in a jeans and sport shoes or any of those leather shoes which people eventually ride their motorcycles even after we tell them not to but still they do that stuff they will feel some heat that's what i feel and when i entered the noida greater noida expressway after going through that traffic suddenly the heat flow increased because the heat was there and i started riding hard started and it just came through right and then it was fine so as always like most of the motorcycles high speed riding is not an issue bumper to bumper single you will feel some heat and me feeling some heat right now means that in june Jul- may june it will be felt even more apart from this let's maybe talk about vishwas's favorite yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. part right so once the, the build quality uh, yeah, yeah. when the right. first impressions are over yeah you start looking uh, with the second and, and third <laughs> impressions as well detailing yeah, yeah. Detail. so i am generally not a critic Hmm. so i would leave that uh, subject yeah vishwas vishwas Vishwa has spotted a lot of areas where uh, he thinks that uh, bsa has cut yes. corners in terms of qualities uh, i was Sorry. not very peculiar about finding such stuff i was just concentrating on the motorcycle was riding but vikas please can you guide us on or maybe show us the stuff that you feel uh, is not up to the mark in terms of not to name any brands but uh, similar motorcycles of this genre I think when you compare it with them, obviously the price levels would be very different, so the quality itself would be different. But then when you compare this with something at a similar price level, which is available in the market, I think uh, you know the overall visual quality. When you look at the handlebar, you look at these hinges, you look at uh, you know the rail here. Why not? So if we start with the rail, so see in terms of the form of this rail, there's no issue as such, right? It's a well-designed rail which could be useful. But then again, when you look at you know the overall visual uh, quality the here, job. the paint job, and you know these uh, well the, joints, the well joints which are visible here, mm-hmm. they could have been better in terms of uh, you know maybe the paint or the finish overall. And here also when you look at you know when with due course of time, let's say when this uh, motorcycle is used maybe in some a uh, coastal area or something or you yeah. know uh, rust and once all rust yeah. comes into picture okay. then this would look pretty i would uh, would not would not look, look nice i would mm-hmm. say so in terms of this uh, you know overall paint job here this could have been better similar thing when you move on to the you know the handlebar because it's the first thing you look at when you start riding a motorcycle mm. in terms of the switch gear on the handlebar itself yeah. this again 
okay could have been little better maybe the gloss the gloss could have been little less or if it was so glossy it could have been a better gloss here so it would have given a better look to the uh, so you mean overall, that yeah. the handlebar is the paint is too glossy that's what you are trying to say it's it glossy it's glossy but not that i would say visually appealing gloss which you can see here so probably okay. a matte finish no, no. high quality it's gloss. not a high quality gloss okay. so the gloss quality could have been better you know when you look at this uh, fuel tank lid as such right it's a nice uh, established in 1903 written here mm -hmm. but when you look at these uh, you know the overall finish here right it doesn't give you that premium kind of look while well, i'm not talking about giving something which would be there in a 10 lakh rupee bike mm -hmm. but still this is just a you know lid and by the way this is super better. tough to open we experienced it today in the morning yes, we yes, had yes, to yes, take yes, yes. Uh, five six attempts to opening it was fine but putting it back was a struggle Right. So this uh, this thing is a problem in its design as well. So design yeah. as well as the quality of yeah. this. Then uh, when you look at the rear view mirrors, I yes. think when I was riding the bike, uh, they were virtually not there for me. Mm -hmm. So I was riding without the rear view mirrors because yeah. I could not. I mean, probably uh, I tried to adjust them, but it was not too easy to adjust them also. And they were vibrating as well. They were right? vibrating. Yeah. It's not yeah. easy to adjust them, and they were not useful. As mm -hmm. in, I could not use them while riding. Mm -hmm. And that, in fact, also made me shift to the left lane while I yeah. was at high speed. But I shifted to the left. Finally. You were talking about the gear lever and the clutch. Oh, sorry. Yes. So yeah. even the brakes levers, and the clutch lever. Yeah. Even yeah. the levers. Uh, yeah. So these days, uh, in motorcycles of you know which are sold at this price, so you get the quality of levers has gone to the next level, which mm. is comparable with the uh, uh, bikes at a much higher price. So probably that is also something which would give a better, I would say, overall appeal to the. bike mm -hmm. if you look at the first impression when somebody sits on it okay similarly when you look at these cups i don't know what these are called but the cup sitting right behind the cluster now they have this, to conceal the, the bottom the, portion they yeah. have to conceal this or maybe some give something which is in rubber so it could cover this entire plastic unit hmm. uh, which is there uh, yeah this gap you know? is very bad mm. yes water can seep through and whatever i mean yeah, dust yeah. and not dust just about water but there. the visual appeal also goes away when you look at something like this some more effort is required in terms of uh, hmm. in all these things which are actually looked at by a rider when yeah. he sits on the bike first uh, rear view mirrors are something we definitely would need some maybe design change or something else yeah one more issue that i experienced i would like to point out since i have burnt my riding pant today yeah, yeah. <laughs> is this part i don't know what happened um, you keep your uh, you know riding boot here but why my riding pant was coming in contact with this part of the exhaust Maybe and when you, you put your when you put a foot down yeah. yeah so it kind of burnt through mm. a little bit of my riding pant so there's right. no heat shield yeah there is no heat yeah. shield here it is required so this is something that you should be aware of yeah, yeah. apart yeah. from that any other issue that you so guys face so if you look at the indicators yeah you know they're very nice in terms of the form factor mm -hmm. they're not those huge indicators they're yeah. nice little ones uh complementing the the look of the motorcycle see hmm. it's so nice yeah. but when you look at uh, the quality portion of it it still feels that you know it could have been made a tad more cleaner if you look at this gap and if i compare the right indicator with the left one the ah. gap itself is i mean yeah, it's so different you can so, see through yeah you can see through this mm. while again i'm not comparing but if you look at that indicator in that motorcycle you would not see any difference in gaps between both the sides so this is something which you know can and again to coming back to the you know the paint finish when you come to you know this part of the bike again you see again the gap and you know mm. the the triple t the, yeah. the triple t uh, and the overall paint finish here it doesn't give you that you know feel while you kind see these two kind of an unfinished two, look is there it, in the paint it, yeah job, it's right? little mm. yeah kind of unfinished because you feel good when you look at these uh, two meters here the instrument cluster specifically yeah. the two o'clock thing just mean what we were talking mm. that's something which gives you a nice feel but then these things make you feel it could have been better now one more thing that i want to talk about is the uh, braking performance mm -hmm. on this motorcycle in this segment uh, i think this is one of the first motorcycles that has got the brembo brake calipers do we have anything in the 3.5 lakh range that has brembo brake calipers i don't think so Nissans. Nissans are there. Yeah. Nissans, kis mein? Uh, I don't think so. Nissan bhi hai. It's Nissan mostly is that drive. What do you call that? Vibre. Vibre. Indianized Brembo version. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It's Vibre. That's the lower uh, budget yeah. version of the yes. Brembo yeah. thing. Yeah. So uh, 
This is a first in this segment, the Brembo brake calipers. Uh, what do you feel about the braking performance? Uh, was it something that was, uh, you know, extraordinary? Or you felt it was like, okay, as expected? So, you uh, rode, you are riding, you rode both the motorcycles, yes, right? Yes, yes, The yes. Super Meteor with the yes, Vibre yes. and the Brembo brake calipers. Yes. So, uh, this is a relatively new motorcycle with new brakes, mm -hmm. right? I've driven that for 12,000. So, the front ones are still the stock ones. I've mm -hmm. not got them replaced. They still have life. So, but the rear ones, I've got them uh, replaced once. Mm -hmm. So, if I compare the braking right now, as we speak, after riding that for 12,000 kilometers, mm -hmm. then this one surely is better. Okay. But when I go back to a new bike, then again, it's comparable braking in both of them. And I tested that uh, on this bike as soon as I increased the speed on this when I took it from you. Mm. And I found the brake pretty, you know, I would say reassuring okay. in terms of the overall uh, you know, I would say ability to stop the bike. Okay. I think it was reassuring and nice braking, I would say. Mm. While that one, when it was new and the brakes were new, kind of 1-2,000 kilometers ridden, I think that was equally good. We didn't get a chance to uh, test out the mileage. We have not tested out the mileage. I haven't done that. I did a tank full in the morning. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to go through the entire tank and report the... I think if you're riding at 140, like yeah. you were doing it today, there's no <laughs> point in uh, checking out the yeah. We were more interested in testing out the top speed and the performance yes. of the motorcycles. Yes. If you have 3.5 lakhs yeah, yeah. in your so pocket, what I, would you buy, Interceptor or this? Simple so, question. No, so I had the chance to ride an Interceptor also in yeah. between, it, which was long ago. Interceptor is still a heavier motorcycle than this yes. for sure you can feel it yes you know, exactly that's what i also felt it's about 12 kg heavier this is 201 that is 213 and there is a feel we were talking to, about it there is a feel to the weight also you know yeah. sometimes there is a weight which you cannot feel but in some motorcycles you can feel the weight hmm. so on an interceptor it is absolutely absolutely like you know total condensed yeah. weight hmm. all together at yes. one place yes so, which also implicates the handling and balance of the motorcycle somehow, because where do you place that weight? In this motorcycle, the weight is, I think, better managed mm. somehow. The motorcycle is also slimmer. Mm. I mean, you can, you still feel yeah. that it can go and you can still it jump it a little. More maneuverable than the Yeah, yeah it's more maneuverable for sure. Yeah. So, these are the things which would differentiate. I do not know in terms of a flat run out, how would a twin perform against a single maybe that would be faster yeah. but uh, this one is like a, like something which you can ride for a long period of time you know because of the talky nature your views so i think if somebody actually would want to compare a single and a twin then probably you would compare these two if somebody you know has decided that he wants a single and he wants this kind of a torquey machine mm. and a spring like torque then he may not go for the interceptor but if somebody just wants a 650cc a powerful machine which he can ride in the city and maybe on the highway also like you were discussing, then I think both are comparable. Okay. It would be difficult to say, okay, I'll go for the interceptor and not for this or for this and not for the interceptor. It depends on somebody's choice in terms of what he wants. Anyone who can understand the difference between how a single performs yes. and yes. how a twins, twins exactly. perform, exactly. a twin motorcycle performs. Exactly. So if somebody that is, is the type of person who will be able to differentiate to make a properly. Yes. Otherwise, Otherwise, the place out and out, uh, out, yes. and out, it yeah. would be if you are looking at a twin cylinder. Yeah. Uh, then there is no comparison. You will yeah. say it as twin. This and is. even from a value from money standpoint, yeah. they will say that a twin is more value for money, money yeah. at the same price bracket. Absolutely. Until and unless somebody says, Ki mujhe, I want a single. That, so, yeah, that, I appreciate the torque that the single offers. Yeah. The way it rides. That right. could be a point in the thought process for sure. And okay. definitely in terms of the... Build quality, Build quality, I would say again, interceptor is where. I would actually say that, I mean, if we have to kind of sum up things, that the second version of this motorcycle, if BSA tries to iron, iron out all these issues, then I think it will make a very good, uh, you know, product. Right now, there are too many. Niggles yeah. that we figured out in terms of build quality, right? Yeah, it those rides are, great, no. but, yeah, those yeah. but the are, fit yeah. and finish. Uh, For a motorcycle somehow... costing 3.5 lakhs, yeah, yes, yeah, you're yeah, competing yeah. in a very, you know, fiercely competitive, competitive space, yeah. right? Exactly. So while we have talked about, you know, what you should buy between an Interceptor 650 and the BSA Gold Star 650, one question that comes from an ownership standpoint is the service network. What sort of confidence it will inspire if you invest that money on a BSA Gold Star? I don't think so. There is any comparison in the service network between these two uh, brands, right? Royal Enfield has a huge network. It's a, it's a tough job to compare this. 
I mean, uh, when you talk about service, you, there are two things that you generally question. Ah, you can tell about service. Yeah. Sorry, ah, you are the more eligible one. Yeah. So, uh, one <laughs> is the reach of service. Yes, yes. The reach other one is the quality of service. Yeah. Okay. So, when you talk about BSA, the reach of service, hmm. of course, it's a it's a brand which is which does not have many many motorcycles sold uh, hmm. across the length and breadth of the country. So, they would have limited service centers, and uh, if somebody is going to compare the reach. Uh, BSA would obviously f uh, fall flat uh, because it hasn't reached to those numbers that it could viably put in uh, service centers all across the country. So, yeah. the other subject is the quality of service. We all know what is the quality level of uh, RE in terms of service. Yeah, okay, so it's definitely not, the, not uh, great. Yeah. I mean, it's not great. Mm. So this can be a differentiator when it yeah. comes down to a challenging brand like this. Mm. That is, they better if they are able to better their quality exactly. delivery. If they are doing a um, good otherwise job in and service, no. otherwise in yeah. terms of reach, hmm. obviously they cannot compete with somebody who's been there in the country for decades together on motorcycles. Okay. So this is one important point which everybody's mind would cross okay. while making a decision. Yeah. So reach will be a question, right? For sure. I think we are done with most of the questions, right? Uh, most of them. Do we have a final one-liner in terms of who should buy a BSA Gold Star 650? If somebody has to buy, what is the use case or why they should buy this motorcycle or people should just skip it? It's no, a very tough it, question. It's, but it's yeah. a simple one. If somebody is in love with singles, yeah. who's used to the temperament of a single and lunar motorcycle, hmm. then there is a motorcycle available in a cubic capacity of 650 cc, hmm. which does the job far superior than the conventional single cylinders. Yes. Totally agree. So, yeah. you know, it still holds on the temperament of a single, hmm. but with much greater ease. Yeah. I mean, imagine uh, this motorcycle doing 160, the thump, which is disturbing, is also mellow mm. and nice. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it comes with, the, obviously, the batch of BSA and a legacy exactly. and the looks of a classic, you know, something which you want to own. Mm -hmm. And then uh, use it within the city, moving from one place to the other, as I told you. It's much easier and it's always much easier to have something with a power which can be managed easily. Mm. So as I said, this is a easily manageable motorcycle. You don't have to rev it up mm. all the time in terms of moving from place A to place B. You can be easy going. Yeah. So this is something to be kept if you are a lover of a single cylinder and the temperament of a single cylinder motorcycle. Okay. This is for you. Vishwas, so this is who for buy this, this is right for a, so what sir just mentioned is about a user you know who mm. is probably looking forward to a single mm. more about the uh, engine and the overall package I would say uh, for me a good use case would be somebody looking forward to a city riding motorcycle who wants to you know ride the bike basically from home to office and back the person who likes riding and not driving to work that kind of profile and somebody who wants his bike to look a little different from the conventional bikes which are available in the segment right now. And a lot of that I have not seen which all colours are available in this, but a lot of that would depend on the paint scheme etc which are available. And uh, you know how this could be made to look even more retro and even more classic uh, by way of some maybe uh, you know accessories and uh, you know other gear which BSA I don't know whether they're selling it right now mm. or they would want to sell because Royal Enfield actually has gone to the next level in terms of their availability of merchandise and uh, gear for the bike yeah so that's something which would be an important thing so maybe you know if I were to make it look more retro and I was you know somebody who has bought this 650 then I would probably have a lot of leather things you know, onto this. Options should be available. Yeah, options should be available. Why yeah. there are companies selling those, uh, you know, leather saddle bags, etc. in the market. But then again, why not something from the brand itself? For me, if I have to sum it up, I think to uh, put your money on this motorcycle, number one, you have to kind of associate with the legacy of the BSA brand. That is number one. Second, uh, I really look forward to having a single cylinder motorcycle in my garage. And I would not actually want to go to a you go to go towards buying a bullet 350 or a classic 500 if it still is available i don't i don't think so if it's available right now it's no, gone out of life no, no, so uh, for someone who is looking for a secondary bike who already has a big bike yeah. wants to enjoy the feel 
of a single cylinder motorcycle because he has kind of experienced the twins, the triples, the inline fours and then you kind of get to that phase in life where you want to again experience the mm. pureness, purity. Being there. That, being there. Uh, yes, right. the purity that a single cylinder offers. Then I think for that sort of an audience also, this is a good option to consider because single cylinder plus smoothness plus great city handling plus lighter than the interceptor and you can commute to office on this which we all want to do yeah. if things fall in line every day right so it, it makes a great case for me but i may want to wait for the second iteration of this motorcycle when it comes out because we have seen a lot of quality issues if those are sorted out and the quality of service, as Yudhvir was saying, is great. Then mm. I think we can really look forward to buying can be a something differentiator, like this. You know? Yeah, can be a differentiator. So that is all we had to share. I think it's been a pretty long video. Yes. We have covered all the aspects. Yes. If there are still any questions, shoot your questions in the comment section below and we'll be happy to answer them. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, Yudhvir. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks.